All right, guys, so as we're coming down a little back slew here, I'm actually uh, punching a Tokyo rig. And out here on the California Delta, we got to come through some really heavy stuff. And the nice part about a Tokyo rig is that that free swinging hinging metal tears that grass. When you're popping it and ripping it, it clears a lot of that debris for you. Like right now, I'm going through cheese, duckweed, and hyacinth. And cheese is just really thick algae. And there's hyacinth, there's elodea, like every type of plant you can possibly get stuck. So what I'm doing right here on this rig, that's a three-aught hook with a uh, size uh, four-inch dragon tail. That's a Savage Gear product right there. It has a lot of natural movement. When you flip through, you can hold it still. You're going to get a lot of vibration out of that bait, so they like to trigger on that. And that's two three-quarter ounce uh, tungsten flipping weights. And I have them opposed to each other right there. And I actually use a little poly band and I twist it around the shank and it actually keeps those weights in place. They're pegged. I don't like them sliding up and down if I'm punching. If you're just flipping that clicking noise like a traditional Texas rig may help draw the fish to it, but you can see the water's pretty clean right here. I want them fixed, which is gonna help them penetrate that mat and pull my whole presentation through. Bottom's kind of silty right here. So what happens is as it penetrates through, that sinks down into the mud and then that little, uh, my little dragon tail right there is completely exposed to where it's a traditional punch rig. If you're coming through high ascent or you, if you have a couple feet of water, typically you punch through and you're working the bottom of the high ascent or just through the mat up and down. But when you have very limited depth for punching, a Tokyo rig can be a great option because it gets stuck in that bottom as soon as you come through. But they heard all that commotion and now they see that bottom presentation. So it's a fantastic option. So when I say that Tokyo rig gets caught down in the mud and that bait's exposed like this, this uh, dragon tail's made out of Duratec, which is that real buoyant, real tough product that has natural float to it. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. You guys know about those floating Ned rigs? Similar to that, but it's gonna drop down there and really stay in an upright position instead of just flopping on the bottom with all those extra ridges right there. Just holding tension on your line alone is gonna get a lot of natural quivering motion out of that bait. Now uh, you'll notice something too when I'm throwing this Tokyo rig in there. If, you know, this floating vegetation here, this is all hyacinth. And what you're going to notice is I'm trying to throw at the base of the tulies in conjunction with the hyacinth, right where they come together. The reason for that is currents going back and forth. And what it does, it washes out a little deeper pocket around the base of the tulie. So instead of it being, you know, let's say the bottom right there is 10 inches deep, you're gonna get an additional four or five inches right at the base of the tule. And we all know bass, when there's any sort of little difference in depth change, they love holding on it. And the nice part is the tule serve as a little bit of a current break, a little bit of a deeper pocket. So anytime you see anything sticking up in hyacinths, especially little tule patches like that, isolated tulies, that is your primary target before just any open matted vegetation. I've heard people bring up, why wouldn't you just punch traditionally? And, you know, excluding getting lost in the bottom, when you're just moving down a bank and you have intermittent hyacinth like this, covers cover for bass. But let's say I have a traditional punch rig and then I'm just on regular toolies. The Tokyo rig has a higher percentage of getting bit on just plain stuff. So intermittent, it doesn't even have to be silty bottom. That's sitting there and you have no weeds impeding it, and it's basically just like a heavy duty drop shot. Let's not kid ourselves right here. But it gets down there, you have that free movement. It's more fishy than just a big traditional punch rig uh, that's down there buried. So now I'm coming back up to the thick stuff here, and I know I'm gonna have a great option to punch as well. Now you can see right here, about the first couple feet of line, I sharpied black, and then I'm using high visibility braid. What that allows me to do is once I flip it up there, if I still see black line, I know I didn't get good penetration. So I'll shake it a little bit and try to get it through again. I want to show you guys something right here. Watch the angle that I'm pitching in. I'm hitting with momentum that's going through. Now, the nice part about a Tokyo rig is a lot of the time you can just kind of pitch it up and land it there and you could shake it. And there we go. It found its way through. Whereas a traditional punch rig, you have to come through a little bit more audible. It's a bigger way. If you pitch it up there and shake it, if the mat's thick, it's not gonna go through. But let's say it's slick and calm, and maybe they want a little bit more stealthy, it can also be a great option.